Hey guys, Waylon from the Zombie Star here, and this week in comics, we actually have a good bunch to talk about. Uh, here, comic books release on a Wednesday, and believe it or not, I do not buy enough comic books in one week to, I think, make a video that would be long enough or, or worth, you know, talking about. So, this is really just a collection of things that were released for the month of January. Uh, we're going to start with Image Comics. We're still following, I think I've been vlogging this since issue one, Stillwater. Uh, Chip Zdarsky, uh, Ramon Perez, and Mike Spicer really put together a, a pretty fun uh, suspense thriller, um, mystery thriller with supernatural elements, focusing on a small town and just how you know crazy things can get um, when some powers that be want to control. And now we're getting to a really interesting story of the citizens uh, fighting back. Uh, really awesome, really interesting, you know, think of really just a long Twilight movie or Twilight story um, for Stillwater. Um, I was very surprised. This story is actually pretty, pretty good and it's getting better. Uh, still from Image, I know I just went off on Stillwater, but if you guys have not heard of Department of Truth, this is starting to get a lot of attention. And I really believe that it's because of the actual content in here. It is just so relevant uh, to... Everything, I mean, it seems like this book is really updated to things that happen during the month of its release. I don't know how they're doing that narratively, but um, really blew me away. And I feel the content extremely controversial. Um, Department of Truth, I think I've done this, I think I've been vlogging this since issue one as well. Um, think Men in Black, but way darker, not comical, and uh, really touching on some controversial real life issues. I'm really surprised with what they're doing here. Uh, I'm enjoying it, but whoa. It's it's pretty it's pretty dark pretty deep, uh, and this is of course uh, Tinian Simmons uh, Bidikar, and issue five we saw and I actually got some uh, variants for this one. But Department of Truth, if you guys have not started reading this, this is a really good read. I gotta say from Image, other than Stillwater, this has got to be one of the most interesting books that I've read in some time. Let's check out these variants that came out. So I don't know which covers there. I don't know if this is cover A or B. The one I just showed you was the standard cover. <clears throat> but Lady in Red, she's a significant character um, in the comic itself. <clears throat> Here we have, is this the one with the, yeah, with the beast? I mean, there are elements here of, of course, drama, suspense, mystery, but even horror and, uh, you know, supernatural as well. It's, it's, this thing's all over the place. For you guys who love conspiracy theories or reading about just crazy conspiracy theories and actual conspiracies that are believed now in our current social climate this book addresses it and uh, but of course it just goes deep into it and just creates this crazy story about this government department that is supposedly out for our benefit but we're still finding out what's really going on with it and uh, i'm just loving these covers <clears throat> dc and i believe that was all for image that we're picking up um this month so in marvel seems whenever marvel does something dc always has a response it seems like that's always the case um marvel recently released wolverine black white and blood um and dc released batman black and white not complaining uh, i read both so win-win but uh issue two we saw the release of batman black and white what I'm seeing here is this book here is one, it's a collection of small stories. A lot of writers and artists are involved with this. So it's really hard to name who's doing this because it's really a collective of so much talent and it's different authors and writers every issue. Um, and it's a collection of like, I'm pretty surprised they're able to condense like at least a good five stories in here. I want to say also, this is really just a celebration and a, uh, to acknowledge really just Batman and the art of Batman over many years. I really consider it just an art collection. But also some pretty short, some pretty awesome short stories written by some acclaimed authors. Uh, the book also really does a good job of giving you background information uh, of the authors and the artists. So really just a collection of art, cool short stories, and speaking of the art, we had to pick up the um, variant covers. <clears throat> Couldn't find the incentives. Incentives, incentives I'm finding out are harder and harder to get a hold of. They're more expensive, they're more rare, so they've been pretty hard. I didn't get any incentives this past two weeks. I'm only showing off the variants, but I mean, I love variants as well. And of course, uh, this is our Catwoman. And of course she does have uh, her own story in this issue that I think is just pretty cool and the art is pretty amazing. 
<coughs> and I, again, I don't know the artists. There's just so many involved, but look at this. Look at that cover. Again, this is Batman Black and White number two. Um, when I went to go see my store, they still had number ones available. Um, they're pretty awesome. If you guys want to start reading or just collecting this for the art pieces, they're pretty amazing. I mean, when you're thinking CGC submissions, this is the quality of work that you want to get um, encapsulated and graded. I love that. Not a virgin cover, but it looks like a virgin cover. Not a pencil sketch, but it certainly kind of gives that effect. And I'm a huge fan of pencils, pencil sketch variants. Let alone pencil sketches. That Peach Momoko mystery box I got was amazing. <clears throat> All right. So I'm going to go off on this one. And y'all can have that in the comments if you want. Harley Quinn. Um, I like Harley Quinn. Okay. And there's been so many iterations of Harley Quinn. From the Batman animated series to video game. And to now even actress Margot Robbie. Um, portraying Joker's very known girlfriend. Harley Quinn. So DC lately, and I think I've been logging this from issue one as well. <clears throat> so this is Batman White Knight Presents Harley Quinn. I love that DC's kind of running their DC Black Label series, which I, I don't know, I want to say it's its own universe, but it certainly is apart from the traditional run from DC. And for me, it started with Batman Curse of White Knight, which was released, I want to say 20, early 2019 amazing story that is eight issues long and it's a really good story just going back on the Wayne legacy and kind of the morality of how the Waynes were able to get their their fortune okay that of course Bruce inherited years later it's a really it's a really crazy story it's really good I think it really um, kind of explored um, certain things that have never been explored before when it comes to uh, Bruce Wayne and his family so with that when that ended this is a jump off directly from that. I wouldn't say a sequel, it really is a side story. Regarding Harley Quinn, I have to say that this is the best and my personal favorite interpretation, iteration, or representation of Harley Quinn. Um, she's not Joker's girlfriend here. She is not just uh, you know one of Batman's villains. She's really in her own, and I really love the way that uh, they're writing Harley Quinn. I really appreciate uh, that she's more just an independent character and she's growing um, in that way. Not only that, it's just an awesome story. It's just an awesome detective story. She is kind of taking a detective role. I don't want to say she's good. I don't want to say she's bad. She's just Harley. Okay. And uh, if you're a Harley Quinn fan, uh, this is going to be a must, an absolute must. This is issue, this is book four. Okay. Uh, I think I've been vlogging and here's a variant cover. I think I've been vlogging since since book one. Books I'm talking about, I don't think they're like sellout books. If you're thinking, oh man, why even bother? It's issue four. Um, if you have know your local store, I'm sure they'll be able to, to go back and order uh, number ones. I'm not sure. But speaking of number ones, it's something that I need to, I think, uh, point out in the videos that this has number one so you guys can start reading from it. <clears throat> uh, sometimes I just look up what's coming out and if I see something I've never seen before or something extremely unique, um, I just take a chance on it. Sometimes I get lucky, sometimes I don't. But the ones that I brought up this month or the ones that I purchased this month that I really am going to follow uh, come from some... Here's one publisher that I'm not very familiar with. Aftershock. Okay, this is Aftershock Comics. And this is number one of I Breathed a Body. And look at that cover. Pretty crazy, right? This story is absolutely insane. Uh, if you guys were fans of Black Mirror, the show off Netflix, the really bizarre uh, Netflix show, this is going to be for you. Um, this is the only other, I think, uh, medium of kind of entertainment that I've seen take on that same theme of the dangers and the bizarre nature of technology and how we use it in our day-to-day -day lives. This is a really interesting story, really going on suspense and just... This is just an absolute psychological thriller. This is what I'm getting from issue one. I Breed the Body. Totally recommend it if you guys were fans of Black Mirror. This is pretty interesting. And man, things get crazy in issue one. <clears throat> also, from Dark Horse. Dark Horse Comics, which actually I have, haven't seen anything really relevant coming from Dark Horse. 
Um, I know they used to run a Predator series, uh, Alien series, and uh, they used to run even a lot of Star Wars. But all that, of course, has been picked up with Marvel and that High Republic. Oof, that was good. But from Dark Horse Comics, Crimson Flower number one, an acquired taste. Okay, let me tell you, an acquired taste. I like it. And this cover is so misleading. Crimson Flower, you see kind of this... I don't know. It This is not anything to do with Lord of the Rings or Game of Thrones type story. I like the premise though. It's pretty simple. Girl has her father murdered. She's out for revenge. That's it. Okay? And it's really just following her. What really stands out about Crimson Flower number one is the art. And that is what I'm really going to say is an acquired taste. Um, the story is pretty simple but still has a lot. There's a lot of things that I need to figure out and things that I cannot wait to see how it goes. But Crimson Flower number one from Dark Horse, released this month, um, is pretty awesome. I didn't see any variants, I didn't see any any incentive covers for this or for I Breed the Body, but these are number ones, and so far, pretty good if you if you want to read something really just off the beaten path. Spawn, I'm a huge Spawn fan. Um, I'm collecting issues one through a hundred. I don't read Spawn anymore, but I do cover that beautiful work, especially if, it, if it's Capullo or if it's Todd McFarlane himself. And so many other artists that work on Spawn. But number 314 came with, again, this black and white variant. And this is by McFarlane and Capullo. So again, thinking CGC, you got your name all over this. <clears throat> and Spawn, of course, created by McFarlane. I'm a huge fan. One of my favorite superheroes, I guess, for uh, lack of a better term. Um, and this is number 314 variant. I didn't get the standard cover as uh, I am not collecting or currently reading Spawn. I stopped after 100. I don't even know what's really going on with Spawn anymore. I do know there's a movie coming out. And man, I cannot wait to see what that's going to be about. But look at this beautiful work. Of course, you know, McFarlane just loves drawing his character. <clears throat> so, that was a lot, but I think went through them pretty quick. Uh, awesome Issues came out this week. This is pretty much all of them. Those Batman Black and Whites are amazing. Um, and uh, I guess we'll do this again maybe in a few weeks uh, when uh, I get enough of these weekly issues coming out. Well, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you all next time.